where does Trixon fit into this? Um, you know, maybe we kind of pivot now just while we're talking about German stuff and German drums. Where does Trixon fit in that? Because, I mean, these are just some out there drums, obviously. Yeah, I mean, uh, Karl-Heinz Weimar, he was from Hamburg. I mean, so he's he's Western German. And uh, he started basically after the war with the drum, drum manufacturing. And um, this was quite a very, very successful company. I mean, sonar drums were existed before the First World War. Uh, they were found in 1875. The factory was in Eastern Germany. So... When the Second World World War um, ended, Consul Otto Link he was um, escaping uh, the Eastern German government, and it was quite interesting story because um, the Gestapo came to his house to uh, arre arrest him, and he could jump out of a window in the garden where his son. Uh, picked him up with a stolen ambulance and drove him into Western Germany. Oh, my God. And so he came into yeah, different stations. He ended up in Wittgenstein, and uh, the um, Duke of Wittgenstein helped him to find a new factory. So Sonor started in Germany, and, I mean, they had all the know-how from before the war, and that was the number one in the Sono factory in Eastern Germany that built the Trova and Tecton drums. The second strong brand was Trixen, found by Karl-Heinz Weimar in Hamburg. They had also other companies. There was uh, in Kassel, there was um, Tromsa drums, and they had in Bavaria, um, Derry or Rimmel drums. These were the main manufacturers after the Second World War. And Trix Trixen had quite good context to jazz drummers they had a i mean there are pictures with him and gene krupa and a lot of american drummers and so he had a lot of in, uh, ideas and uh, crazy ideas like doing the tail star and the the speedfire drum kit yeah. and um yeah pretty cool stuff yeah, and so people know that I'm sure people have seen them, but maybe they don't know what brand they were. Just if someone's listening who's kind of a newer drummer, these are the drums that they, you know, one side is like let's say the 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 side the batter side that you're kicking is an 18 inch, and it goes down to like a 14 or 16. And yeah, there was the tell star. Like they had yeah. a, they had a bass drum. I mean, they had a normal um, rack tom, but they had a bass drum where the 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 kick side was 20 and and um, the bottom side was 16, and the same drum was used as a, as a floor tom with a 16 batter head and a 20 resonant head. I didn't know it was the same drum. Yeah, and they had very weird crocodile finishes in lilac and crazy colors. Pretty cool. But uh, Buddy Rich played um, tricks and drums at that time called Vox drums in America. And he had an endorsement from 66 to 67. So they had a quite famous endorsee yeah. in Buddy Rich. And Clyde uh, Stubblefield from, um, and, and I, I guess uh, all the drummers, because um, James Brown had many drummers, but I think they used the Vox. Um, Drum, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is, which is so neat. So this, I think, is not true, but I think I read in an article for Drum Magazine or one of them um, where... When Carl Heinz Weimer died, I heard he wanted to be buried with his whole inventory of drums, or he destroyed all of his drums when he died, like right before he died, or something like that. But well, some, someone told me that that's not true. Uh, not really. I mean, I mean, what happened? I mean, why is Trix not around? I mean, they were a big player at that time and very popular. What happened is that at the end of the 60s it was very very attractive to invest in in Ireland for some polit political tax reasons and so he made a fusion with um, um, an Irish piano factory called Ripon and they made a fusion and he brought all the production from Germany into Ireland, and then basically Ripon went bankrupt and he lost everything. And hmm. so probably this 
Yeah, killed him in the end. 